Welcome back to Let's Read Clonod. Yesterday, on April 14th, we got acquainted with Tomoya. And we basically went through our first day and learned a little bit about his backstory. And how things aren't exactly ideal for the guy. Anywho, if things sound or look a little bit different, that's because I adjusted a few settings as I'm working on a better way, to say the least, of recording. Just quality and audio-wise, just so it's a bit better. So, apologies if things seem a bit weird. Anywho, I've done some thinking, and I think it might be best if I can rec if I do these on a daily basis. So, for example, today's April 15th, the entire episode, or two-parter episode, will be on April 15th. And at the end, we'll look at the Dongopedia for anything that shows up. That seems to be generally what I would like to do for now, but if you guys think otherwise, feel free to let me know. Well, without further ado, let's get back into it. Oh, I also turned back on the character voices. I kind of like turned them off, just because I wasn't sure if I wanted them or not while reading, since I'm reading in English and there is voices in Japanese, and it might prolong the reading a bit, but it wouldn't really be an experience without the original voices, and so in my personal opinion, I think it would be okay if I have the voice on and then kind of like read after it. But of course, you know, this is all like subject to change and stuff later, but enough rambling from me. Let's get back into it. She's standing here again, just like yesterday. You again? Why can't you go up the hill on your own? Um... Well... How can I put this? Or, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. You don't know me, after all. Oh, uh, alright. But you should really get to school on time like a good student. But you're late for school! She points straight at me, her eyes burning right through my thinly veiled reticence. Forget about me. I... I look away, unable to meet her gaze any longer. What am I doing acting all serious and getting on her case? I don't know her well enough to do that. She's absolutely right, though. She's just as much of a delinquent as I am. Do what you want. I start up the hill without her. It's just... What drew me to her was the fact that she didn't really look like a bad student. That's all. Oh, please wait! A voice. It's hers. Uh, may I join you? I look behind me to find her standing there quietly. Why? Well... I feel anxious going alone. It's kind of odd that she's asking me, of all people, someone she doesn't even know. I mean, she has to have at least a friend or two, right? I look up the hill, squinting from the sun's blinding glare. Eh, it's not too far away, and she's got no one else to go to up with right now. I guess it wouldn't hurt. Do what you want. I start walking again after repeating myself. Please wait! What now? The girl eyes me, looking as though she's deciding on whether to say what just popped into her head. Then... Anpan. A single word is all that comes out. Uh, how should I even reply to something like this? Hmm, I should probably look at that now. Well, there goes that idea of looking at the dong Dongopedia afterwards. Anpan. Anpan is a sweet roll that is filled with red bean paste. It is commonly offered in Japanese bakeries, supermarkets, and schools. Sorry about the quick edit. Just had to fix a couple things again. I Apparently I slowed down the text thing as opposed to speeding it up. I was like, why is this so slow? Oh, that's why. Baguette. I don't really understand what you mean. 
You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just gonna say that to you. So what? You like Anpan or something? Is that it? No, not particularly. But it's not as if I hate it. I guess I like it more than I dislike it. Talk about beating around the bush. It's not like I really care either way. Alright. Well, let's get going. Okay. There's a bit of newfound energy in her response. Maybe that was some kind of weird magical spell she cast just now. Da dunk, da dunk, da dunk. Her footsteps make it sound like she's galloping behind me. The bell rings, ending the period. Um, huh? Someone calls out to me. Unexpectedly, I turn to face the source. Can we all just appreciate this student right back here? <laughs> That face, though. And you are very intently staring at something. The rest of them don't really seem to care. Uh. Ryo Fujibayashi? She's the class president, I think. Or rather, she's the girl that was saddled with responsibility of being the class president. If I remember correctly, she's Kyo's younger twin. She insecurely darts her eyes left and right as she's staying next to my desk. Um, yeah. Um, here, she says as she hands me a sheet of paper. A love letter? <laughs> no, it's not. You're bolder than you look. It's not easy to just hand that to me directly. Um... It's not a love letter. Is it a chain letter then? It's kind of mean of you to hand it to me so nonchalantly. And I don't think it's a chain letter either. A letter of challenge? Thump. Fujibayashi blushes and presses the paper against my chest. It's the hand- it's the handout from this morning's homeroom. Ah, oh, lame. I toss it in my desk drawer without so much as looking at it. It's probably nothing important anyway. She's not too happy about that. Hmm? Do you need something else? Uh, I think you should try com to come to school on time more often. That's no concern of yours, right? But, um, I think it'd be better if you came on time. So, you think you could start picking on your classmates' attendance now that you're the class prez? That's not it, but... Well... Her eyes start to water. Uh-oh. I guess that was a little too much. Apologize or ignore her. I'm sorry, I went a bit too far. No, I was out of line. I'm sorry. Hey, Okazaki, don't make the class prize cry, okay? Otherwise, her sister will come after you. It's okay, I'm not crying. You can't say that we are on the verge of tears. In any case, since no tears have actually come out, let's just say she isn't crying. Well, I'll consider it. Oh, yes But if you could, please try not to be late. With that, Fujibayashi takes out a deck of cards from her shirt pocket. Then gently, but clumsily, she begins to shuffle the deck. 
And the card spatters splendidly across the floor. Oh. Flustered, she picks them off the ground and starts shuffling again. She manages to she manages to she manages to do it this time. That also makes me lose my sentence. Fujibayashi clumsily fans the cards out and holds them out towards me. <laughs> What's this? Uh, go ahead. Should I pick one? Please pick three. I have no clue what's going on. Is she trying to show me some sort of card trick? In any case, I take three cards. Please show them to me. Here. She stares at the three cards that I had chosen. Oh. Hmm? Okazaki-kun, you'll be late tomorrow. Is she trying to pick a fight? Hey, didn't you just tell me to come on time? What's this about? Um, on your way to school tomorrow, there'll be an old lady who'll have trouble crossing the street. You'll be late because you help you help her. But she'll be grateful for your help and give you some money for your trouble. Wait a second, why is your fortune so detailed? I wouldn't believe that if you're using tarot. I would believe. Uh, I wouldn't believe that if you were using tarot cards, much less playing cards. How can you possibly tell all that would happen with just numbers and suits? It's a girl's intuition. Her sixth sense is in full force, huh? On top of that, she's pretty confident about it. Could it be that you don't actually want- you actually don't want me to come to school? That's not it! It's just what the fortune says. Okay then, I absolutely won't be late tomorrow. Huh? Even if I come across an old lady in trouble at the crosswalk, I'll pretend I don't see her. I don't think that's nice. I think you should help others when they are in need. No, I'll abandon her. But... There, the bell's ringing. Go back to your seat. Yeah. Upon hearing me say so, Fujibayashi heads for her seat with her shoulders dropped. Drooped. Same thing. Sheesh, she's making me feel depressed. Um, hmm? Please. Don't take the fortune too seriously. She says and trots to her seat. Maybe she's really trying to pick a fight after all. Having been told such a weird fortune, I'm feeling kind of blue. As I rest my head on the table after third period, I hear a loud bang come across from the seat next to mine. I look up to see that Tsunohara had slammed his bag onto the table. What's wrong? He's seen a bad mood, it's not even noon. Oh, I woke up feeling great. Had a fantastic morning. That's good to hear. It's what happened after that that's put me in such a bad mood. After I eat breakfast, I normally make myself some coffee and go back to my room. Nothing makes me happier than having that little moment of peace and quiet right before I get my day started. Okay, come on, hurry it up, get to the story, go get the story going already. And just like every other morning, I pushed the play button on my cassette player and started drinking my coffee. I like to relax the sounds of my favorite hip hop songs.
Not only that, it's a one-of-a-kind mixtape with all my favorites on it. Uh-oh. Ah, yeah, oh, so graceful. Yo, yo, my name is Okazaki, you're a... You're a... Hmm, forget it, this is stupid. I, I won't try to recreate that, I'll be honest. It made me spit my coffee out everywhere! Why were my awesome songs replaced with your nonsensical rapping? Huh? Did I do that? Uh, yeah, you introduced yourself at the beginning. My name is Okazaki. Oh, yeah, I did. That tape was one of a kind, man. It had all my favorite songs on it. Don't get so mad. I was trying to do something nice for you. Even if you were any good, I'd still be mad at you. Why? I was rapping to you about all your best qualities. It sounded to me like you couldn't think of a single nice thing to say. Well, yeah, actually that's true. I couldn't come up with anything when it came down to it. Sorry. Man, what you did was messed up. I kind of feel bad now. Huh? Are you saying I'm in the wrong here? Of course I am! How, how would this be anything but your fault? Not only that, you left it on record and went home! You wiped out everything after your stupid freestyle! Who cares about those lame old songs? I do! They were the best of the best! Give them back! You know that's impossible. Then go rent the CDs again and remake the whole mixtape! I'll make another recording and try harder next time. How's that? That's a pretty good compromise, right? No, don't ever record over my tapes again. In fact, don't even touch them! Ah, oh, damn it. What did I do to deserve this? You learned a good lesson. Always be sure to break off the recording protection tape on the cassettes you love. Even if I did, I bet you just put tape over it and record anyway. Okay, then the lesson is obviously to is uh, the hmm. Okay, then the lesson obviously is to hide the things that are important to you. We wouldn't be having this issue if you just kept your hands off my stuff. Don't ever come into my room again. Sunohara yanks his chair out and sits in it. I'm going to hope that didn't matter in the long run. Yeah, probably not. Just the dude, right? I'm sleeping until noon. Don't bother me. Didn't you just wake up? Yes, but a certain someone ruined my nice, relaxing morning, so I'm going back to sleep now. Once he finishes his rant, he rests his head on the table, exhausted from the tirade. Oh. <sighs> I yawned slightly. Maybe I caught his drowsiness. I looked down at my desk table to figure out what subject fourth period is. That thin textbook means English grammar. That teacher constantly calls on me. Ugh. I can skip class or sit through it. We should probably sit through it. It's gonna bug us later if we don't. Sunohara is sound asleep. Hey, Sunohara. I grab his shoulders, shoulders and give him a good shake. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, the teacher just called on you. What? what? Seriously? What's the question? Oops, I ran over him. You have to sing a song by Alice. Yeah, I think it's probably best if I do Dongopedia as I go. It probably would be better for context sake. Alice is a Japanese folk band whose hit song includes the 1977 Fuyo no Inazuma. Fuyu. I think I might have said Fuyu. Who know? Uh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Sunohara jumps out of his seat and stands. You're rolling thunder. You're rolling thunder. <sighs> he screams out the lyrics. 
The teacher turns around, his chalk still held to the blackboard. What was that, Sunohara kun? Eh? You're rolling thunder! You're rolling thunder! I didn't call on you? The sound of muffled laughter begins to envelop the room. Man, we are just being a terrible person to this guy! Huh? Hokazaki, you bastard! You embarrass me in front of the whole class, man! I'll give you an unagi pie later to make up for it. There's probably a hotkey for this, and I'm gonna figure it out. Oh, you're at the end! Unagi pie! Unagi pie is a flaky, buttery cookie from Hamamatsu, Japan, seasoned with eel extract. I almost had that issue. I don't know. Have you ever, if you've ever seen that video where an uh, an old couple is like doing a commercial for I think like pot pie or something, and the old man has to say flaky buttery crust, but he for like he just can't do it for whatever reason, and is they spend like the minute the video is like four minutes long, but it's hilarious. Is he just continuously tries to say uh, buttery flaky crust or flaky buttery crust, one of the two. And then his wife tries after they just give up on him, and she fails on the first attempt. <laughs> it's just, it's really funny and cute. I highly recommend you just look up Old Man Flaky Buttery Cross. You'll, you'll find it. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 